analysis as promised as uh, retired Army Major General William Enyart joins us. Uh, General, it's always good to see you. Um, let's go back to the story um, in Jordan. We can look at it, our maps of uh, Tower 22 and um, I can ask you a little bit about what may or may not have happened here. This is Tower 22, just an overview of it, 350 million, uh, 350 personnel deployed. And you talk about the engineering and the aviation and the logistics that happened there. But if we come out and look at it on a map, you start to see here it's right along the border um, with Syria. It's in Jordan, but right along the border with Syria. And this is the border uh, with Iraq. So they got in, right, General? They got in. They got one of these drones through. Uh, they're investigating now how that may or may not have happened, but it happened. Three U.S. The service members are dead, as we said. We showed their pictures. A terrible situation. Question is, how do we respond? What do we do now? Well, the uh, the Wall Street Journal is reporting uh, that uh, evidently an American drone was coming back into the base. Yeah. Uh, at the same time, this other drone was approaching, and so that's evidently how this drone slipped through. You know, uh, in your previous correspondent was talking about how we've had over 160 attacks so far. Yet this is the first time we've had any Americans killed. Uh, I think that says three things. It says, number one, that our defenses are very effective. Uh, number two, it says that the Iranian uh, missiles and drones are not nearly as effective as they claim to be. And I think that's uh, borne out in what's going on in Ukraine. You know, uh, in Ukraine, there's been a lot of property damage, but really very few uh, civilians killed. And uh, the Russians were never able to completely shut down the power grid. So I question how effective uh, that Iranian weaponry is. And three, uh, we've been very, very lucky to date uh, that we've not had uh, anyone killed. And certainly, uh, as, a, as a commander who had to send troops into, into combat zones, uh, my heart goes out to, to the families of those soldiers who were killed. So it's interesting that you bring up luck or misfortune or whatever the case may be, chance, I suppose, is the best way to say it. What effect might that have on our response? So say that reporting, we're still trying to confirm whether or not it's true that there's a U.S. drone that was supposed to be coming back, the air defenses are down for some reason, this drone gets in, is accurate. So does that mean that they just got lucky that, and got a drone through, or does it mean that the Iranians have discovered something, maybe they were following our drone and they were able to, I don't know how how these things work, but they were able to follow it in. They knew the defenses were down. And if so, how might that affect how we respond? Well, it's it, frankly, it's too early to tell yet. Yeah. Uh, but that uh, either either situation is certainly plausible. Uh, I tend to think that it's more uh, uh, chance uh, than it is. Uh, the Iranians have figured out that they can follow our drones back in. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's more likely that it that it was uh, was chance. OK, so if you're President Biden, then it is chance. You have to decide, how. what am I going to do here? This has happened before, and I've done X, Y, and Z. It's happened again, and the only thing different is this time they got through. And now we have, which is much different, we have three uh, members of our military who have been killed. So we've been having this conversation. We had a Republican on, Democrat on, both members uh, of the Armed Services Committee about how do you deter Iran and send this message of deterrence without obviously risking a, a, a some sort of a wider war. What are some of the options that the military would have available? Uh, well, first of all, I want to say that when I served in Congress, I likewise served on the House Armed Services Committee. Yes. So, but, so I have a little experience there. Uh, and I'm absolutely appalled. I didn't hear what the Democrat had to say, but I did hear what the Republican had to say. And I'm appalled that she stated uh, that she attacked President Biden over this. You know, I didn't hear Democrats attacking uh, President Bush when 9-11 happened. And I think it's appalling that that uh, politicians would use the deaths of American service members for political purposes. Now, having said that, what uh, President Biden is faced with is uh, a response that is uh, effective to show our resolve and effective to uh, dissuade uh, the Houthis and Iran, or not, excuse me, not the Houthis uh, in this instance, but rather probably uh, one of the branches of Hezbollah, but an Iranian-backed militia uh, from doing this again. The problem here is that Hezbollah, Hamas, uh, Houthis, these are all folks who are uh, involved in a holy war. And uh, they will not be happy until they see Israel destroyed and they see uh, the United States out of the region. Uh, I think what it, the U.S. is going to have to do is uh, convince Iran to stop supplying these folks with weapons. Uh, now, we have not directly attacked Iran since the early 80s. Uh, when President Reagan did, in fact, uh, bomb uh, uh, Iranian oil platforms as well as strike Iranian ships. But we have never uh, directly attacked uh, the Iranian homeland. Uh, I doubt that that will happen this time, but I suspect this is going to be a, a pretty, rebe pretty robust uh, response.
Okay, General, thank you. General Enyard, as he points out, rightfully, was also a member of the Congress, so you've seen both sides of this. Um, thank you, sir. We always Thanks so much for watching. Just go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.